A very good morning, everyone. So today's lecture is on complete cast metal crowns, metal ceramic crowns, and all ceramic crown preparation. By the end of the lecture, you should be able to summarize the different armamentarium used for the preparation for any metal crown or a porcelain fused crown or an all ceramic crown. And also, you should be able to understand the advantages, disadvantages, indications, and contraindications as applicable and the step-by-step -step procedure for the preparation. So just to brush up the previous uh, class lectures uh, information, what are the main guidelines for tooth preparation is that your tooth uh, preparation should have a total occlusal convergence, then sufficient occlusal cervical or incisal cervical height or dimension, then the ratio of occlusal cervical to facial lingual dimension should be adequate that it uh, helps in the retention of the crown. Then the circumferential form of the prepared tooth, then the reduction should be uniform. It should not be over prepared on one uh, or on any one of the surfaces. Then the reduction depth also uh, should be maintained. Then where the finish line is located and the line angle that is being formed uh, on the uh, different surfaces of the tooth. So unless you follow all these guidelines and you know that all, all these points that we have discussed here have been maintained, uh, you cannot have a successful preparation. So overall when you are done with your tooth preparation, this is what you have to look for. So uh, once again to have a look at what are the different kinds of finish line. So the first one is our shame for finish line. So the uh, um, importance of chamfer finish line is mainly uh, applicable in cast metal crowns, then PFM crowns, and uh, the uh, the thing about uh, PF uh, chamfer finish line is that there is least amount of stress that is caused at the margin bit, uh, interface between the crown and the unprepared tooth structure, and it is very distinct and it can be easily identified. This kind of a finish line is prepared with the help of a round and tapered diamond burr. So half of the tip of the diamond is seated on the uh, margin and you can see the half uh, on the second picture. So that is how the shape of the finish line is formed. And next coming to heavy chamfer. This is usually indicated for all ceramic crowns so that there is a thickness of the uh, ceramics at the margin and then you have a 90 degree cable surface angle with a large radius and if you notice unlike the uh, the chamfer finish the normal chamfer or a shoulder you can see that there is a rounded internal line angle it is not sharp so there is lesser stress concentration uh, for even for heavy chamfer you use a round and taper diamond burr and it is slightly better than the conventional chamfer but of course uh, not the shoulder sometimes the, sh the shoulder burr uh, sorry the shoulder finish line is better and, and it is dependent on uh, the kind of restoration also that you are going to give so uh, if you are adding a bevel then uh, that is mostly indicated for metal restoration so coming to shoulder finish line once again uh, you are uh, going to give a shoulder finish line for all the ceramic crowns and in PFM crowns you have a shoulder preparation on the facial or the buccal margin and a chamfer on the palatal margin. Then uh, the advantages is that it has a wide ledge so there is more resistance to occlusal forces and it minimizes the stress which leads to fracture of uh, porcelain. You use a flattened tapered burr and uh, in this the uh, advantages is that it gives you healthy contours and also provides maximum aesthetics. But the uh, problem about this kind of a finish line is that there is a lot of destruction of tooth structure in an attempt to prepare a, a shoulder finish line. So because of that sharp 90 degree angle, although there is good amount of space for tooth uh, ceramic that can be built up, but this can cause concentration of stress and hence coronal fracture at the level of the cervix. And then the next part is that it cannot be used for cast metal restoration. It can be used only for your ceramic restoration. The next one is your sloped shoulder. 
um, in the slope shoulder you have the margin at a 120 degree angle and uh, this uh, slope shoulder can be used mainly in metal ceramic crowns and in anterior teeth and uh, so uh, so in this kind of a finish line there's no unsupported uh, enamel that can be left out when you're preparing it so um, so that is the advantage and that is why um, it, it gives you more acceptable aesthetics when compared to a normal shoulder and uh, so as this slope shoulder uh, as the name itself indicates uh, it helps in uh, reducing the bulk of the uh, material at the margin so there is a thin uh, so it allows space only for a thin small uh, thin uh, metal framework and of course a little bit of ceramic on that and next one is your radial shoulder it is again a modified shoulder then you have a cable surface which is 90 degrees and uh, the, sho the shoulder, uh, we have already discussed that it has some disadvantages because of stress concentration. But in this kind of a finish line, as you notice that in your um, in in the internal line angle, it is rounded. So hence the stress concentration is lesser, and it acts in good for, for porcelain. The next one is your shoulder with bevel. The shoulder with bevel is usually given on the proximal surfaces of a por uh, for a uh, met, uh, por porcelain fused crown uh, that is uh, given with the help of a torpedo diamond burr and uh, these are mainly indicated for especially for the proximal box preparations like your inlays and onlays and uh, also the occlusal shoulder for onlay then mandibular three-fourth crown then facial surfaces of uh, metal uh, ceramic restoration um, especially when the aesthetics is not of uh, a concern and the uh, situation where all, already the shoulder is present it helps when you are uh, giving a bevel it, uh, you are increasing the surface area and it also preve uh, prevents in uh, you know re reducing the caries and uh, cuts out the previous restoration so hence you are trying to locate your finish line on the tooth structure so this bevel it allows the uh, cast metal margin to be bent at a burnish and or burnished against the prepared tooth structure so hence uh, it reduces the uh, marginal discrepancy and it removes the unsupported enamel next one is the knife edge kind of a preparation it uh, permits acute margin of uh, metal and uh, axial, re uh, axial reduction will be uh, uh, very less and hence uh, it ha helps in giving you a thin margin but sometimes with because of this thin margin it is very difficult to do the uh, wax up because you know that wax is subject to internal distortion and it can chip off also and casting definitely will be difficult and it is uh, susceptible to uh, uh, distortion as mentioned so what are the other indications the it is usually given in your mandibular posterior teeth uh, with very con uh, convex axial surfaces and also lingually tilted lower molars so what are the uh, ideal uh, reduction depths for different kinds of preparations for all metal crowns the shame for depth should be around 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter the axial surface reduction uh, is around 0.5 to 0.8 millimeter and occlusal reduction is 1 to 1.5 millimeter then metal ceramic crowns the finish line uh, depth is 1 to 1.5 millimeter then occlusal reduction is 2 millimeters then all ceramic crowns the finish line and facial reduction depth is 1 millimeter then incisal and occlusal reduction is 2 millimeter so coming to full veneer crowns uh, as mentioned earlier when compared to your partial veneer designs full veneer crowns can exhibit superior retention and resistance forms and it is specially designed and used when there is already severe loss of tooth structure and the restoration demands maximum retention if the abutment tooth is very small uh, as it is if it's a short clinical crown then full veneer crowns are indicated if the edential space is uh, also long and you are joining two abutments or three abutments in those cases we should always opt for full veneer crowns because it increases the retention then endodontically treated teeth then uh, it is necessary for uh, retention and strength to uh, also correct minor malinclination and also a crucial plane 
corrections can be done by using full vinyar cross. Next is your contraindications. So, if there is uncontrolled caries, then if you cannot protect the tooth from the caries, then uh, if uh, caries must be controlled by other means before any restoration can be uh, successful. In these kind of conditions, you cannot give full coverage crowns. First, any t any point of time, caries cannot be covered or controlled with the help of a crown, but you have to stop what is the etiological factor responsible for the caries. You must remove the existing caries lesion and only then you have to go ahead with the uh, the restoration or giving giving it a full vinyar crown. Uh, without that, you cannot be doing the. And the next one is your full metal crown preparation armamentarium. So in the armamentarium, what are the different things that you need to have? First thing is your handpiece, then your number uh, 171 L burr, then your round and tapered burr, a short needle diamond burr, torpedo diamond burr, torpedo burr and red utility wax. So when you want to compare uh, the advantages between full metal, porcelain fused metal and all ceramic uh, um, restorations, I would say that full metal has the best uh, retention and resistant form. Uh, it has high strength, then it has good protection, long lasting and removal of less tooth structure. If you are doing a posterior tooth preparation, if it is a molar, um, then I would advise that we can go ahead with a full metal crown and definitely it is very less expensive and economically it is a good option. But if the patient's prime concern is porcelain fused, uh, uh, sorry, is aesthetics, then porcelain fused metal is a better option than full metal where you don't have to sacrifice as much as tooth structure that you have to do in all ceramic crown preparations but it is definitely slightly higher than that of your full metal but at the same time you are meeting with the high demand for aesthetics so in that case for a pfm crowns would be the best option and uh, of course in retention they give uh, they give you good retention and also uh, because of the kind of preparation, the nature of preparation that is involved, it permits easy correction of the axial wall. Next, coming to your all ceramic crown uh, uh, preparation, it gives you excellent aesthetics. So, always for your anterior uh, teeth, uh, all ceramics would always give you excellent aesthetics and because of the translucency, it gives you a more natural-like appearance. It has good tissue response even for subgingival restoration and uh, it is more conservative for facial walls than that of your PFM crown. But looking at the disadvantages, yes, poor uh, uh, aesthetics can be seen, metal allergy and if you want to check for the vitality of the tooth, uh, metal crowns cannot be helpful. But if you look at porcelain fused metal, they might have improved aesthetics because you have a layer of porcelain added over metal. But because of the metal margin, they are not perfect aesthetically. And sometimes this metal margin can also be exposed because of the gingiva that might receive. And then definitely there is reduced translucency and uh, the ions that might be present in the metal might leach into the surrounding and it may discolor the porcelain. And because the porcelain, uh, if it is subject to more occlusal forces, it might fracture. But and unlike your porcelain fused metal and full metal, all ceramic definitely has a lot of advantages. But they, they have also some disadvantages because they have reduced strength when compared to PFM crown. So there's something called as a phase change. When you're trying to uh, do any occlusal corrections on a cer all ceramic crown before you do the final finishing and polishing, if the ceramic undergoes a phase change, then what happens is it might fracture and it might crack up. So that is one main disadvantage. And it re requires a lot of expertise while you're doing the preparation because your all ceramic crown restorations are usually designed with the help of a CAD CAM. So when you are trying to uh, make, uh, make a, uh, a scanning, when you, look, uh, when you look at the scan of the prepared tooth structure, if you notice that there are any irregular surfaces or rough surfaces, 
what happens is this uh, this cannot take in the uh, ceramic so the the software itself it rejects and if your imp your impression also should definitely be a perfect impression and uh, you know but it is very less conservative and also because of the brittle nature of restoration or ceramic restorations cannot be a, a definitely uh, has has some disadvantages so looking at the armamentarium for your metal ceramic crown and your all ceramic crown um the first thing is that yes hand piece is common number 171 l bar then your round and tapered bar flattened tapered bar short needle uh, bar are all common for your metal ceramic and your all ceramic the torpedo diamond bar is the one which is uh, additionally used for metal ceramic crown where wherein your proximal uh, finish line is prepared with the help of a uh, shoulder width so that is why that is very important so let us look at what are the steps in preparation the step number 1 is your occlusion reduction so always remember that when we are doing our tooth preparation the first thing that we need to see is the anatomy we need to observe the anatomy of the uh, tooth what is the cuspal form how does the tooth look like is it flattened or does is there any amount of anatomy that is preserved while it has been subjected to uh, um uh, endodontic treatment or if it is not subjected to endodontic treatment how is the condition of the anatomy so once you have observed it if it requires that an anatomy has to be created then a co build up with the proper occlusal anatomy has to be done and when you are reducing it follow the anatomical grooves and the fissures and always maintain the cuspal form so that the crown that you are going to make also will have a cuspal uh, anatomy and it will not be like a flat tooth so the kind of work that our technicians usually will give us is not perfect so uh, you must you must do an excellent preparation so that the kind of uh, the crown the technician can fabricate also should follow the occlusal anatomy a minimum of 1.5 mm clearance is required on your functional cusp uh, and 1 mm on the non functional cusp so how do you start off uh, to learn this when you are doing it on your typhoidon teeth what you can do is place depth orientation grooves and join these grooves in one direction with the help of a round and tapered so once so once your uh, grooves have been placed on the uh, ridges and the uh, prime uh, and the primary grooves so these grooves have to be carefully joined with one another so if uh, there is adequate clearance Uh, and if you think that uh, there is already a, a gap between the tooth the opposing tooth and the tooth that you are going to prepare so in those cases you should not prepare any kind of grooves because it might deepen the preparation it might reduce the height of the tooth so hence in that case whatever anatomy is there just follow the anatomy and uh, give some amount of clearance that is just required restoration so the occlusal reduction should follow the configuration of the geometric inclines so what are the different geometric inclines that you have uh, that is your uh, the palatal slope of the buccal cusp and the buccal slope of the uh, lingual or the palatal cusp so you follow these slopes that are present on the anatomy of the occlusal uh, surface of the posterior So step number two is your functional cusp bevel. As as mentioned in the previous class, a functional cusp bevel is uh, necessary and it has to be made on all the functional cusps. So what are the functional cusps? Uh, upper buccal and uh, lower lingual are the functional cusps, right? So um, uh, so so when you are giving a functional cusp. it increases the surface area and it also helps in give 
giving uh, giving more uh, structure over there more uh, the space for the uh, material to be built up so uh, you can use a round and tapered for this and uh, so you are uh, by placing uh, uh, a bevel over here uh, you are not only increasing the surface area uh, what you can also do is that uh, you can in, uh, you can increase the retention of the crown so uh, when you if you fail to give this kind of a bevel it can produce thin casting or poor morphology so how do you check for your uh, occlusal clearance so once you know that there is adequate clearance uh, clinically what you can do one way is that you pass your uh, your probe uh, between the tooth the prepared tooth and the unprepared the opposing tooth and uh, you notice if there is any catch if there is no catch then the next thing that you have to do is there is something called as flexi strips which have different thickness uh, and they are color coded and they have different uh, thickness so for each crown uh, the different type of crown that you are going to use uh, you, you can use a different kind uh, different colored uh, flexi strips and check for clearance so if you are able to remove this flexi strip between the two uh, teeth uh, without any kind of interference very easily that means there is adequate clearance if there is any resistance while you are trying to pull it away that means to say that there is no uh, enough occlusal clearance so hence the next uh, way of checking it is that you can use utility wax or your modeling wax what you can do is take one small uh, piece of modeling wax place it between the two teeth and you have to ask the patient to bite if you see there are any uh, indentations or if there is any perforation on the wax that means to say that though the cusp of the upper tooth are coming in contact with the lower tooth hence they are causing a perforation that means there is no adequate clearance and there is no space for your material to come that is for your crown to come in so that means that particular area where it has been marked has to be uh, uh, prepared uh, prepared again and then it has to be re and next is your step number 3 that is the preparation of uh, your buckle and the lingual walls so the buckle and the lingual walls can also be uh, reduced with the help of a round and tapered burr and so while while using your round and tapered burr they will reduce the uh, axial wall and at the same time the tip of these uh, uh, these burrs will help in will help in forming your finish line so as you know as you notice that this this will form a chamfer this tip will form a chamfer line step number 4 so uh, while you uh, move in from your uh, buckle preparation to your proximal preparation the initial proximal reduction has to be done with the help of a short needle burr or a long needle uh, burr that that can be used and what you have to do is you play, you start you begin from the occlusal surface and you keep pushing it towards the uh, uh, in between the proximal surface you form an indentation as you notice in the picture so as you keep moving your burr and as you cut keep cutting the uh, tooth structure through and through what you see is uh, as seen in the second picture you will notice that there is a small enamel ledge that is formed that can be broken with the help of a enamel hatchet and then hence it helps in breaking the contact points with the adjacent and step number 5 is your axial uh, finishing round and tapered diamond burr so uh, you use this kind of a burr to pass through your entire axial surfaces that is your buckle and your uh, uh, lingual walls and also your proximal walls so the finish line with the help of this burr you should ensure that whatever finish line you are going to create it should be a smooth and first one there should not be any irregularities next one is your step number 6 uh, especially in your molars uh, where the cervical occlusal length is uh, smaller when compared to that of your anterior teeth uh, in your molars to improve the uh, 
retention form to increase the reten uh, re retention and also to provide resistance against the uh, oblique forces you need to use a 171L bar for the placement of a seating group that is that has to be placed on the uh, buckle sur on the buckle surface so uh, once the buckle surface has been prepared you make your impressions and that is how your model should look like and uh, as you notice there has been uh, uh, ditching has also been done these terms will be explained to you in your uh, consequent classes so that is how your model should look like and that's how your tooth your prepared tooth look like you can notice that all the surfaces of the tooth are properly finished and polished and there are no irregularities or any uh, undercuts that are formed and as you notice there is also a nice bevel that is placed on the buckle surface if uh, and the next one is the differences uh, altogether to summarize uh, i have already shown you the steps so to summarize and to know the differences in one table you see that there is full metal metal ceramic and all ceramic in your occlusal reduction uh, for full metal it is just 1.5 mm on the functional cusp and 1 mm on the non functional cusp Uh, for your metal ceramic crown you have to take out uh, 2 mm on the functional cusp and 1 mm on the non functional cusp then for your all ceramic crown 2 mm on the overall 2 mm on the no, uh, functional and the non functional cusp so uh, the type of burrs that you have to use on the buckle and the lingual walls you use a round and tapered chamfer finish line for your full metal crown and also a reduction of 0.5 to 0.7 mm has to be uh, done and then for your metal ceramic crown uh, uh, ceramic crown you should use a flattened tapered diamond burr then uh, for your lingual walls your round end tapered or your torpedo diamond and buckle uh, uh, wall should al also uh, have a shoulder finish line and the lingual wall will have a chamfer finish line and uh, overall a reduction of 1.2 to 1.5 mm is uh, sufficient for your all ceramic crowns you should have a uh, should use a flattened tapered uh, diamond bar which helps you give a shoulder finish line and uh, an overall reduction of 1.2 to 1.5 mm uh, can be uh, 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 reduced to give you a good successful restoration so to summarize these are the points and i hope that uh, you will be able to remember uh, that ultimately any tooth structure that you are going to uh, prepare you should always maintain uh, that uh, maintain or preserve the tooth structure you should have good retention and resistance form you should maintain the marginal integrity preserve the periodontium before you uh, uh, expect that you you will have a successful crown prep right so these are the uh, points that you will have to remember if you have any doubts you can get back to me